Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for June the 26th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Chronicles chapters 8 through 10 and Acts chapter 5 verses 1 through 16. The title of my devotional is, What Was Ananias and Sapphira's Sin? That's one of the most perplexing but also condemnatory stories that we find in Acts. Well, let's take a look at Acts chapter 5, verse 5, which says, And as he, that is Ananias, heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last, and great fear came over all who heard of it. Now, Ananias dies for his transgression. All who lie, steal, or commit fraud are not struck dead. That's very clear that there are sin, all of us have sin, we lie, um, none of us are sinless. So what is so heinous about Ananias' transgression? Uh, why was it, why were Ananias and Sapphira's sin punished by death? And another question that seems to um, pervade even the, all, when we, in the context of the New Testament is, where is God's grace? Ananias and Sapphira are imitating the act of Barnabas. If we look at the context of this passage, Bar Barnabas in Acts chapter 4, 36 and 37, he owned a tract of land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. He is considered extremely exemplary, um, and his heart is clearly in the right place. But their heart, Ananias and Sapphira's heart, um, is not in the right place. They hold back part of the sale of their property and claim that it is the whole amount. And it's only through the Holy Spirit that Peter reveals Ananias's heart that is filled by Satan. We see that in Acts 5 verse 3. Uh, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? Satan is at work in Ananias. He has, what would Satan's purpose be? Well, it'd be destroy Ananias, but also to destroy the church. M much more is going on here than simply an individual sin. Uh, while the rest of the community, the Messianic community, Jesus' church, is filled with the Holy Spirit, as we see in Acts 4.31, these two have a very different spirit. They're filled by Satan. They're not lying to men, we see in verse 4, but to God. The church is not simply a human organization, but it's the body of Christ indwelt by the Spirit. And to attack the church is to attack Jesus himself. We see that in Acts 9 verse 4, that um, Saul's attack against the church was not simply against man, but was against Jesus himself. Jesus says, why are you persecuting me? And so their act constituted testing of the Spirit's presence in the community. That's what we see in Acts 5, 9, um, that Peter says to Sapphira, why is it that you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? This sin was to deny the resurrected Christ and his work in his people. The keeping back part of the price, what is, why is that so significant in verse 2? Well, it echoes Achan's sin in Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. There we see that um, Achan, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah from the tribe of Judah, took some of the things under the ban, what God had said was to be dedicated to the Lord. And therefore, it says, the anger of the Lord burned against the sons of Israel. And in the same way, Ananias and Sapphira were keeping back what they were publicly declaring to be dedicated to God. Achan's sin resulted in the death of 36 Israelites, defeat against Ai, and the loss of national confidence. We see that in Joshua 7 verse 5. The hearts of the people melted and became as water. And that is the people of God. By exposing their sin, however, and the removal of the couple, God protected the community from defeat. Instead, the Christian community experiences the blessing of God, unity, signs and wonders, multitudes coming to the Lord, and deliverance from sickness and the demonic. If we look at Acts 5, 12 to 16, we see that. So what seemed like a terrible tragedy was God's salvific power at work in his community to both purge it of evil and sin and those who were pretending even like uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, uh, but also it was in exposing that, so it was protective on one hand, 
purging on the the other, and it was demonstrating that God rules and reigns over his people. That the only ones we should fear is the Lord. That we would be walking in his his grace, walking by the power of the Holy Spirit in his love toward others. So do you understand the sacredness, the holiness of God's church, how he protects it? He holds it in his hand. He's the one who builds his church. And so if we act against the church, we're acting against Christ. So how does that cause you to live? Do you live with a holy awe of God's presence at work in his people? Are you committed to it? Do you desire to to help build God's people, and you would not do, want to do anything that would tear it down. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the story and what is an extraordinary story of, of judgment, but also it shows how you protect your people. You remove those who are acting to hurt it and destroy it. Lord, we need you. We need you at work among us. We need your spirit. We, without you, we can do nothing. And so, Lord, let us commit our hearts afresh to you again. In your name we pray. Amen.